So I have one piece of flow blue. Probably be buried with me. At the peak, a whole set, oh, I'm going to say between three and $5,000. At that time, you could easily pay $90 to $125 for one plate. Most any little tiny piece you had in your booth, you could sell for three or $400. All of a sudden, the flow blue market went to hell. It went by the board, and nobody cares anymore. It's uh, Anytime you buy anything, it's a gamble. People are addicted to it. It's kind of like a high and a low. I mean, every day is different. Every day is a gamble. Uh, nowadays, all of us old-timers are dying off or retiring. And there's not too many real antique dealers anymore. They're people that play at it. They think it's fun. It's no fun anymore. It's a lot of work. So why are you still doing it? Because that's all I've done for 40 years, and I still like it. I'm not going to retire. Never? No, never. Almost like an addiction. But you can't help it. If it's in your blood, it's in your blood. Hey, it's just the thrill of the chase. And some people just get carried away. And then it just kind of grew and grew, and now we don't know when to stop. Golden rule has always been, don't buy it unless you can afford it. Real adrenaline rush is like writing a check for like $7,500 when you only have $200 in your account. It's a form of gambling. You buy something in the hopes that you can make some money on it, that you can win, and it is addictive. Thrill of the hunt, looking for the right stuff. One of a kind. It's a sickness is what it is. Antiquing is a sickness. I had a weather vane and I bought it out of a barn for $100. And this high-end dealer came in, in in my shop, and I brought out the weather vane, and she loved it. It was a big rooster weather vane. And she said, where did you get this weather vane? And I said, well, when I was a kid in Exeter, New Hampshire, I had a paper room. And even as a 13-year-old kid, I always admired this weather vane. She said, with a story like that, I'm buying it. Everything's got a story, if you, and if you don't have one, you can make one up. And I sold it to her for 1500 bucks. And you made it up? <laughs> but it didn't matter, because she just wanted a story to tell the next person she was going to sell it to. So, no, I sold it for $8,000. That's what it was. R rumors and gossip run this business. We bought it one time. Well, a tin box with an oval top. It was painted. And supposedly it had come from some famous person that painted oval bar. And it was beautiful. So we kept it and kept it and kept it. Finally, we put it in an auction. You know, when you put things in an auction, for the most part, you take what you get. Well, I think we wound up with maybe 1500 And we paid uh, like $4,800 for it. That was a loss. But you know, you can't cry over the breakage. So, it, it's part of the business. There are a lot of self-sufficient people in the antique business. A lot of dreamers. We're independent souls. You have to make it on your own. And you have to have a curiosity. And uh, I would say that is probably the one thing we all have in common. They don't fit into normal society as we know it. But who's to say what's normal?